Welcome to First United Methodist Church in Starkville, Mississippi. We're proud that you're joining us in worship today. People have gathered uh, throughout the community in the church building itself, and now we invite you to come and be a part of us in, in your living room or wherever you may be as we worship together today. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today thanking you for all that you've done for us. You've blessed each one of us far beyond what is deserved. We long to be in your presence, and so we ask you to be with us as we come to worship you. We understand that this time is a gift in itself to be in communion with you. Let tonight be for you, and let our thoughts and hearts be surrounded by your love. And let that love be ever-changing us as we go throughout our week. Be with us now in this place. Amen. Can you stand up and pass the peace? Me too. Good luck to us. <laughs> We will now take a moment for stewardship video. <laughs> Stewardship, a way of life. As someone who is uniting with our church, will you promise to support the United Methodist Church with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service? Stewardship, a way of life is the theme for the 2008 stewardship emphasis in our church. Based on the spiritual principles of the Old Testament and the teachings of Jesus in the Gospels, our stewardship campaign hopes to produce a spirituality that refreshes our lives with the Holy Spirit, deepens our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, and glorifies our Heavenly Father. The most exciting and newest phase of our music ministry has been the addition of a professional children's music director. Groups that already existed with volunteer workers have flourished with the full-time direction of Cindy Melby. The cherubs still meet and perform for all of our congregation to love. Gap Choir soon grew, and these older members selected two new names to identify themselves, YMCA, Young Methodist Choir Angels, and M&M and &M Choir, Musical Methodists, each average 40 or more participants per week. Both of these older groups were proud to participate in last year's Festival of Lights. sessions we learn traditional hymn melodies and more contemporary music. Not only do our children sing, but they accompany themselves with drums, xylophones, and other instruments. Furthermore, they sometimes create their own music to accompany dance and drama. These three groups, Cherubs, YMCA, and M&M, are always happy to share their music in Sunday morning and Sunday evening worship services. Additionally, they lead the entire congregation in music on Children's Sunday. 
Summer 2007 saw an exciting event in the Christian Life Center of our church, our first ever music camp. A full week camp that developed the musical performance abilities of older children, this program reached not only children active in First United Methodist Church, but others as well. During the week, the 40 children involved worked with professionals who volunteered their time in areas that ranged from stagecraft to art to dance to singing. Lunches and snacks were served by members of the chancel choir. The week ended with a performance of We Are United, with more than 300 people gathered to enjoy our production and support the music ministry. Responses from the children and their parents assure us that this effort was well worthwhile. We are happy to see our children grow in music skills, but even more happy to see them develop a love of God and His church. The music ministry certainly intends to continue the programs that exist. We hope to respond to the needs of our children as opportunities arise. As these children enter the youth program, we hope that they will want to continue to participate in music ministry and that once again we will have a youth music program as well as a children's and adult programs. From childhood to adulthood, the members of the music ministry seek to be good stewards of their time and talents as they raise their voices in praise of God. Hey, I need you. Hey, hey. This song is called uh, Jesus Loves Me, and if you don't know, the words are going to go here, so follow along. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so, you're the ones to let me know. The Ragman. I saw a strange sight. I stumbled upon a story most strange, like nothing my life, my street sense, or my sly tongue had ever prepared me for. Hush, child. Hush now, and I will tell it to you. Even before the dawn, one Friday morning, I noticed a young man, handsome and strong, walking the alleys of our city. He was pulling an old cart, filled with clothes, both bright and new and he was calling in a clear tenor voice, rags. Ah, the air was foul and the first light filthy, 
to be crossed by such sweet music. Rags, new rags for old. I take your tired rags, rags. Now this is a wonder, I thought to myself, for the man stood six feet four. His arms were like tree limbs, hard and muscular, and his eyes flashed intelligence. Could he find no better job than this, to be a rag man in the inner city? I followed him. My curiosity drove me, and I wasn't disappointed. Soon, the rag man saw a woman sitting on her back porch. She was sobbing into her handkerchief, sighing and shedding a thousand tears. Her knees and elbows made a sad X. Her shoulders shook. Her heart was breaking. The rag man stopped his cart. Quietly, he walked to the woman, stepping around tin cans, dead toys, and pampers. Give me your rag, he said so gently, and I'll give you another. He slipped the handkerchief from her eyes. She looked up, and he laid across her palm a linen cloth so clean and new that it shined. She blinked from the gift to the giver. Then, as he began to pull his cart again, the ragman did a strange thing. He put her stained handkerchief to his own face, and then he began to weep, to sob as grievously as she had done, his shoulders shaking, yet she was left without a tear. This is a wonder, I breathed to myself, and I followed the sobbing ragman like a child who cannot turn away from a mystery. Rags, rags, new rags for old. In a little while, when the sky showed gray behind the rooftops, and I could see the shredded curtains hanging out black windows, the ragman came upon a girl, whose head was wrapped in a bandage, whose eyes were empty. Blood soaked her bandage. A single line of blood ran down her cheek. Now the tall ragman looked upon this child with pity, and he drew a lovely yellow bonnet from his cart. Give me a rag, he said, tracing his own line on her cheek and I'll give you mine. The child could only gaze at him while he loosened the bandage, removed it, and tied it to his own head. The bonnet he set on hers, and I gasped at what I saw, for with the bandage went the wound. Against his brow it ran a darker, more substantial blood, his own. Rags, rags, I take old rags, cried the sobbing, bleeding, strong, intelligent ragman. The sun hurt, both the sky now and my eyes. The ragman seemed more and more to hurry. Are you going to work? He asked a man who leaned against a telephone pole. The man shook his head. The ragman pressed him, do you have a job? Are you crazy, sneered the other. He pulled away from the pole, revealing the right sleeve of his jacket, flat, the cuff stuffed into the pocket. He had no arm. So, said the ragman, give me your jacket, and I'll give you mine. Such quiet authority in his voice. The one-armed man took off his jacket. So did the ragman, and I trembled at what I saw. For the ragman's arm stayed in its sleeve. And when the other put it on, he had two good arms, thick as tree limbs. But the ragman had only one. Go to work, he said. After that, he found a drunk lying unconscious beneath an army blanket, an old man, hunched, wizened, and sick. He took that blanket and wrapped it round himself. But for the drunk, he left new clothes. And now I had to run to keep up with the ragman. Though he was weeping uncontrollably, and bleeding freely at the forehead, pulling his cart with one arm, stumbling for drunkenness, falling again and again, exhausted, old, old and sick, yet he went with terrible speed. On spider's legs, he skittered through the alleys of the city, this mile and the next, until he came to its limits, and then he rushed beyond. I wept to see the change in this man. I hurt to see his sorrow, and yet I needed to see where he was going in such haste perhaps to know what drove him so. The little old ragman, he came to a landfill. He came to the garbage pits. And then I wanted to help him in what he did, but I hung back, hiding. He climbed a hill. With tormented labor, he cleared a little space on that hill. Then he sighed. He lay down. He pillowed his head on a handkerchief and a jacket. He covered his bones with an army blanket, and he died. 
Oh, how I cried to witness that death. I slumped in a junk car and wailed and mourned as one who has no hope, because I had come to love the ragman. Every other face had faded in the wonder of this man, and I cherished him. But he died. I sobbed myself to sleep. I did not know, how could I know, that I slept through Friday night and Saturday, and it's night too. But then, on Sunday morning, I was wakened by a violence. Light. Pure, hard, demanding light slammed against my sour face, and I blinked, and I looked. I saw the last and first wonder of all. There was the ragman, folding the blanket most carefully, a scar on his forehead, but alive, and besides that, healthy. There was no sign of sorrow nor of age, and all the rags that he had gathered shined for cleanliness. Well, then I lowered my head, and trembling for all that I had seen, I myself walked up to the ragman. I told him my name was Shame, for I was a sorry figure next to him. Then I took off all my clothes in that place. I said to him with dear yearning in my voice, Dress me. He dressed me. My lord, he put new rags on me, and I am a wonder beside him. The ragman. The ragman the Christ. Scripture from Isaiah chapter 61, verse 10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with robes of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as the bride adorns herself with jewels. Through Christ, we are a new creation. So why do we keep our old rags? We so often cling to them like blankets from childhood that are old and dirty and that we've outgrown long ago. Our rags, they may be old habits or defenses that we've built up, and we fear giving them up for what will cover us once the rags are gone. We fear the vulnerability that comes with letting go of the things that bind us. But through Christ's love, we have new clothes that wait for us. We must be willing to give up the old and change into a new creation. We must all kneel before God and ask to be dressed. Our Creator has made us to be wonderful creatures, and yet we hold on to our past, our lives before we knew the glory of God. Yet God waits. God watches as we put on clothes that aren't designed for us. God watches as we allow those awkward clothes to get dirty and as our faces smudge with the dirt of this world. God watches as we cover ourselves with more and more of what this world is about. And God watches, waiting for us to return, waiting with new clothes that shine in God's glory, waiting with hands to clean our faces, waiting, longing for us to come back. And so we return to God with the dirt of this world still clinging to us, and we kneel before our Creator. And God dresses us with love, compassion, and forgiveness. For in the end, we are all children of God, no matter what we wear or what boundaries we have put up. God knows us. God comes to take our old rags and replace them with new ones. In the form of a rag man, God came and clothed us all. Amen.
Glory, let us share our joys and concerns that we need to pray for with each other today. together and then afterwards the altar will be open for a time of prayer. Let's pray together. God, we come to you asking that you touch our lives. We ask you to touch those who weigh heavy on our hearts even though perhaps we have not mentioned them. You know the things that weigh us down. We ask you to calm those who are anxious in their lives and awaken those who have become apathetic. Be with those in our community and empower us to be your light to them. Help us learn that it is when we kneel before you that we truly can be changed into the person that you desire us to be. Help us humble ourselves before you and arise as you intended us to be. Be with us this week as we go about your business. And let us remember that you are always with us, holding us close to you. It is in your name we pray. Amen. Closing song is number 63, Blessed Be the Name. 
but ask that you stand and let's join in together. Blessed be the name number 63. <laughs>